Hi everyone, welcome to Must Read Monday. My name is Dabney. I'm the Young Adult Librarian with the Twin Books Libraries and I use they, them pronouns. For this week's episode, we are going to be looking at some new books in our collection that are by Native American authors or um, Indigenous authors because some of them are from Canada. And yeah, I'm excited about this list. We did a video last year about some other books in our collection, so I'll link that in the video notes if you want to go back and watch that and get those book recommendations. But these are ones we've purchased since then, and um, they're all great. So we've got a great mix of um, nonfiction, fiction, and some graphic novels, so I'm very excited about these books. And before I get started, I'll just say... Um, through reading these books, um, I've learned a lot, and one is learning um, to recognize whose lands you're on. So in Milledgeville, Georgia, we are on the lands of the Muscogee people, and you can actually look up, you know, your location and find out um, which tribal lands you're on. Um, and I'll have the link for that website in the video notes, but that's something that's talked about in Notab Notable Native People, which I'm currently reading through and really enjoying. Um, so this is a nonfiction book, and it covers um, 50 Indigenous leaders, dreamers, and change makers from past and present. And this is um, specifically looking at um, what they say on the back, American Indian, Alaskan Native and Native Hawaiian people. So you've got people from all those different groups. Um, it's a very diverse selection as far as like, um, just like a lot of intersecting identities, which is really interesting um, with like a mix of people who are um, still with us and people who have passed on. Um, and for me personally, I get really excited when I like find all these people who are around my age and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Um, so it's like very informative and there's also like little kind of um, breakout essays between uh, different parts of the book. So there's the part I was talking about, um, which was about colonialism and like um, that's where they had the website you can look up um, whose land you're on, which is what they're showing here. These are all um, lands populated originally by indigenous people but just to give you an example so like this is you've got like the person talked about um, in the entry like an like lovely illustration of them and then like a summary about them here and I think it's fantastic very good um, this is one I recently read four faces of the moon by Amanda strong um, this is it's a graphic novel but it's almost like a memoir because it's tracing um, the author's ancestors um, over the years and talking about like the the, or the origins of the Matisse people and kind of going through some like important historical events um, and how like colonialism basically changed the landscape, changed tribes and families as well as kind of like a celebration of you know the ancestors and family and kind of like learning from the past and moving forward so it's very good um it's like kind of it's an adaptation of a stop motion film so i haven't looked that up yet but i want to so check this one out i am currently listening to this on libby um apple skin to the core by Eric Gonsworth. So just to read you the little snippet, the term apple is a slur in native communities across the country. It's for someone supposedly red on the outside, white on the inside. Eric Gonsworth is telling his story in Apple Skin to the Core, the story of his family, the um, Onondaga, among Tuscaroras of native folks everywhere. From the horrible legacy of the government boarding schools to a boy watching his siblings leave and return and leave again, to a young man fighting to be an artist who straddles two worlds. Eric shatters that slur and regains in verse and prose and imagery that truly lives up to, up 
to the word heartbreaking. So I am like about a third into this. Um, I'm currently at the point where he's like 13 years old um, and it's during like I think the late 60s so um, it's it's really good. I highly recommend either reading it or listening to the audiobooks. I will say I'm gonna flip through this later because there are um, pictures and that's something you do miss out on if you are um, listening to the audiobook. All right and then um, our duology we have at the Hancock branch, The Marrow Thieves is the first book and Hunting by Stars is the second book. So I have read this one. I haven't read the sequel yet. As you can see, it's lots of awards. Um, just when you think you have nothing left to lose, they come for your dreams. In a world merely destroyed by global warming, the indigenous people of North America are being hunted for their bone marrow, which carries the key to recovering something the rest of the population has lost, the ability to dream. Frenchie and his companions, struggling to survive, don't yet know that one of them holds the secret to defeating the Marrow Thieves. Um, this one is just, it's fascinating, it's terrifying, um, <laughs> it's very, like, so original, and yes, I have this one, the audiobook on hold, if you can't tell, I love audiobooks, and highly recommend this series as well. Um, and now I want to talk about a couple short story collections really quick because, um, you know, authors, I love reading short story collections. And so this one, um, Vampires Never Get Old, has a short story by Rebecca Longhorse in it, The Boys from Blood River, which um, I really enjoyed. I like this anthology a lot, and that was one of my favorite stories in this one. So if you like an author, you know, you can always um, go into our Pines catalog, look them up, and see what other, um, you know, books they have. Because, like, other than their standalone novels, they might be in a short story collection. Um, just like rural, rural, rural Voices, every time I say rural, it just sounds weird to me. But this is also, like, maybe my all-time favorite young adult anthology. I'm not sure. It's so good, um, especially if you're from a small town or a rural area and it has um, a short story in it by Joseph Burchuk. Um, which one is that? I cannot find it. It's in here. But my brain is, oh, pull up a seat around the stove. So, and that was another good story too. And then some graphic novels, really quick. Um, Surviving the City, Volume 2, From the Roots Up. Last year I talked about Volume 1, which is already out. Um, so this continues um, to talk about like the main characters and what they're going through. And a part of the overall um, story is um, the violence against Native women. Um, the missing, I can't remember, it's like the missing um, women. Yeah, there's, there's a term for that. I'm going to look it up in here because I actually read about this um, in one of the biographies. One of the people ran a marathon and dedicated her run to the cause of missing and murdered indigenous women. Which, if you have not about that if that's news to you, you know, look that up then we have Phoenix um, Phoenix song echo this is by Rebecca Runhorse who I love um, I've mostly read like her adult fiction which is like so good but here we go we've got Marvel for you if you are a Marvel fan um, let's see Maya Lopez, the deaf hero known as Echo, already knows a little bit about death and rebirth, and now she has become the new host of the Cosmic Phoenix, Phoenix Force. 
with its galactic fire burning in her veins and always the always adaptable Echo has begun learning how to use her incredible new abilities. But she's come into conflict with certain X-Men who know exactly how dangerous the Phoenix can be. Meanwhile, an ancient demon wants to claim Echo's newfound power and the fight to keep the Phoenix Force safe will push Maya to her very limits. As the threads of her life unravel, Maya will face a journey of discovery through time. But destiny and her adversary await in the white hot room. Sounds amazing. And then last of all, um, A Snake Falls to Earth by Darcy Little Badger. I feel like I've talked about this one before, but can you talk about it enough? No. Um, absolutely love Darcy Little, Little Badger's books. This is um, her second. And this one, um, I'll just read the summary real fast. Nina is a laughing girl in our world. She's always felt there, has, there was something more out there. She still believes in the old stories. Ollie is a cottonmouth kid from the land of spirits and monsters. Like all cottonmouths, he's been cast from home. He's found a new one on the banks of the bottomless lake. Nina and Ollie have no idea the other exists, but a catastrophic event on Earth and a strange sickness that befalls Ollie's best friend will drive their worlds together in ways they haven't been in centuries and some will kill to keep them apart. Um, this one is just like kind of an ultimate uh, friendship is magic type of story, which I loved. Um, I loved the characters. I loved um, being in Ollie's world and meeting all of the animal people um, and then seeing how they do like once they come to Earth and everything like kind of unfolds there. So those are my book recommendations for you. Um, there is one more, sorry, I almost forgot because it was checked out, yay, um, Walking in Two Worlds, um, which is in our Mary Benson collection, but like I said, it's checked out right now, and it's about um, a teen girl is caught between two worlds, both real and virtual, in the YA fantasy debut from best-selling indigenous author Wab Kinu. Um, so it's like, you know, in her, uh, virtual world, she's like a celebrity. She's like the, like one of the, like the most famous, most powerful player in this like virtual game. Um, and then in reality, she's very shy and, um, no one really knows her that well and stuff. And so it's just kind of like these things these worlds like crashing together um there's like a whole uh, there's like a lot of conflict happening both in the virtual world and in the real world and how they overlap um and yes it's pretty cool especially if you're into like gaming um so that's another one i would check out but yeah i hope y'all have a great week and tune in wednesday for our craft program all right bye